the word level. The first thing we encounter in translation is the word. Much of what we do in translation is to open the dictionary to find the word meaning. Even if we already know the word, even if we know a word which is similar in form to a word we already know. This is a time-consuming process. Today we'll learn how to save time. If we know the word and how the word is formed, how the word is created, this will make the process of translation more effective. For example, we need to know that the word consists of the root, the base form, and a prefix that comes before the root, and a suffix that follows the root. If we know the meaning for each part of that of the word, we can piece together these items to get the overall meaning. For example, we have got a list of English prefixes and suffixes. For example, anti, which means against, and antibody, semi, half, and semi-final, tele, far, and television, able, capable of, and reliable, graphy, writing, description, in geography, photography, logy, science, and biology, psychology. In this pattern, we, if we know the mean of these prefixes and suffixes, we can guess the meaning for words that share the same items. For example, we have got prefixes of negation. If they are attached to words, they give the opposite. A and, which are attached to words to mean the opposite, moral and moral, which are different from A and, uh, which are used as indefinite articles. In, for example, is used for, all, for the opposite as well. And they may change the following, the following sound. For example, in, in, impossible. It was originally impossible. Irregular, it was originally irregular. And also illegal, in legal. Here, the same process it could be used in Arabic in all languages. When we have got na sound followed by pa sound, we merge both together. Impossible, like mimba in Arabic, irregular, like mirrabbihim in Arabic, illegal. So, in this pattern, we can think logically about languages. Uh, the an, an, which are used for negation in, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in English, when they are attached to words, sometimes they are not used for negation. But when the, we have a word which is borrowed from Greek, we can think about this meaning, which is a and for negation. Anarchy is composed of ana, an, which is me, not anarchy, which means rule or government. Fauda. We have got another a and, which are from the old English. It so was a preposition in old English, mean in, like in words like. Asleep, or oh, a place. The house is a place. Means the house is in fire. We can't use that adjective attributely, attributively. Like for example, the a place house. This can be handled in grammar later on. And also in English prefix a, meaning out. In words like arise or ahead. Uh, uh, another word like anemia. Uh, you know the word emia, which means blood in Greek, and a n, which means not. So, fakardam, anemia, blood deficiency. Also, anesthesia, anesthesia or anesthetic, it, uh, it consists of an, which is for negation, and then uh, the word ethit, which means perceive or feeling or sensing, so no sensory. Uh, in this pattern, we can think about the meaning. 
uh, another uh, prefix for negation, which is an and none. If there is a slight difference between these two prefixes, for example, the word unprofessional could give a meaning which is slightly different from non-professional. Unprofessional, unprofessional means someone who is professional but he's not behaving ethically according to the ethics of the profession. Uh, Non-professional, he has not the qualification to do the job. So, word creation, the word creation is very important in translation. Look at a notice which was posted in an elevator in a hotel in Paris. Please leave your values at the front desk. This is funny, actually. Uh, here, the word value, I do know the meaning, but if we leave our values so nobody leaves us his, his values at any time. So what's wrong here is the word formation. It, it, uh, we should use the word valuables. In a Bucharest hotel lobby, the lift is being fixed for the next day. During that time, we regret that you will be unbearable. Look at how the word unbearable is used. It's very funny as well. They should uh, say, the lift is under repair until, until tomorrow. Any inconvenience caused is regretted. Now we'll come to the base form. How to translate the base form? Sometimes we have got words which may not be found in the target language in a similar form. Sometimes one form can be transferred into two forms. Taxi, for example, in English, can be translated into Sayyara Ujra in Arabic, two words, one into two, avalanche, inhiyar uh, jalidi, one into two, fishing, side al asmak, one, two, because we have got hunting, which is side, side the berry. Um, in Arabic as well, we have got the same process. We may have one word which could be rendered into two in English, asar, left handed. We don't have a word for left hand, for asar in English. One, we don't have one form for, for that word. So we have to have two forms. Left-handed, one-eyed for our, uh, cross-eyed for ahwal. So you can notice that we have to make up the meaning here. We can make up for the meaning here in two forms. Uh, so, when we move to Arabic, Arabic affixes, the same technique can be followed in Arabic to translate affixes that have no English equivalent. For example, we have got siyab al-tasghir, diminutive cases, also intensifying or amplifying forms, siyab al-mubalagha, the noun of instance, ismul marra, the noun of instruments, ismul ala, the noun of manner is Mulhaya. The noun of place is Mulmakan. The noun of time is Mizaman. The forms of Tafa'ul. We'll explain what we mean by these forms and how to transfer the meaning of these forms. We'll start with the noun of place is Al Makan. The noun of place may correspond to the locative case in English or in the European language. Most place names are listed in dictionaries, actually, like uh, farm, office, but in Arabic, they are divisional. We can derive the, play, the noun of place from a verb. Could be a three-letter form verb or a, a four-letter form verb. For, for example, the word mazra'a, mazra here is derived from the word zara'a, farm. Uh, sometimes we can drive the place name, place noun, from a little, for the form like the one on the screen. Al Jamia Multaqa Tullah to translate the word Multaqa, which is a place, a noun of place in Arabic. We can paraphrase the meaning. We can use, for example, the word place after the word meaning, the, often translating the base form. The university is the meeting place of the students. The university is the meeting place of students. 
or the university is the meeting point of students. So we put the word place or point after translating the base form. Now we'll come to the noun of time. The noun of time can be rendered into other language by adding a word that denotes time, like we did in uh, translating noun of places. We here can use the word time or any unit of time, our day, month, season, next to the base form. For example, al ifnayn tulab. Here we can say Monday is the meeting day or time of students. Let's have a look at the following example. Dhul Hijja Multaqal Hajij. Dhul Hijja is the meeting time or month of building. So we can, in this way, translate any form that we don't know, or that we have no uh, equivalent in the target language. Next time, we will talk about more strategies to handle the remaining Arabic form. Thank you for watching and see you later.